I love a carnival or a fair, and today's project gets those steam ideas flowing in the brain. Hey class, welcome back. Mr. G here, your online vi virtual art professor, STEAM professor. Today's project to that we're gonna be doing today is the Ferris wheel. Now the Ferris wheel project is a collaboration between me and one of my math teachers. There's a class that, that we teach here, it's called AMDM, which is Advanced Mathematical Decision. -making. All of this, all the components that they use in this class is using math as an application for real world problems. And so me and my, uh, one of my math teachers, we brainstorm often because, you know, it's fun. I like to make projects of real world importance for the students because I want to have the kids grasp something that they're like I can I can apply this in life that's the goal why because everything that we learn in school is not necessarily uh, just something out of a textbook we want you guys to be able to apply that to life and that's where we're going with today let's start off on today's project first step is using design to help learn math so we're gonna draw this out so pulling out my sketchbook here now for this I'm using just a large sheet of paper and I'm getting down the basic elements of the design process for this Ferris wheel which is is coming up with all the little components. One, you have a Ferris wheel, which is two spherical disc that we're going to be illustrating on the onto our paper. Now for this, I definitely want to draw this on a 45 degree angle tilt, which means I see it from a different viewpoint, not dead on uh, from the front. Why? Because I need to see the three dimensional aspects of how that's going to be built together going forward. Now, because it's a disc and you're doing some basically a radial design element to this, we're going to start off with a the, getting down our radius and our diameter knocked out. So the diameter on this is 10 inches. The radius is five inches. Remember, radius is half of your diameter once you've illustrated that out now we're going to start breaking this down into the individual sections now i do not have a protractor and i want my students to understand that you don't need certain tools to still come up with the same concepts one thing about math is that when we were breaking down the different mathematical components because he's using uh sin cosine and tangents and we're talking about angles and lines and ray portions over the over the size of the ferris wheel i want to make sure that my that students who aren't well advanced in math still get the same concepts well how do we do that well sometimes we have to break it down and just have them using deductive reasoning where it's, if i put a line here and there's an angle over here we can still come up with the three angles and the three segments of that section to come up with the mathematical equation. There's other ways to come up with math that don't necessarily have to be a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It doesn't have to be that way. Sometimes it's strictly understanding components of mathematical concepts. So for this, so I, I was using my ruler to break down the different sections and create a radial design imagery based upon kind of a cause and effect, which is what I teach a lot in my class where if I put one portion in this space, I have to balance it out with another por portion that's of equal value in a different space. So for us in art, we're using proportion, balance, and unity, those principles of design to help facilitate the design aspect, but also those are math, where by placing certain aspects in there, we've balanced out the design to where it's still mathematically balanced and there's no there's no shift in the weight, which is important for the Ferris wheel. We wanna make sure that it works. So using just the ruler, I'm breaking down different sections of this piece. now. I, start off with it has to be even because if I have to do something odd I really need a protractor for that because once you start getting into the odd measurements you need to know the angle shifts of the different pieces so uh, one pro project I'm working on with him now which is it's a line it's a graphing line illustration design where we're, we you have to use a protractor uh, case in point if you have a 360 degree circle it's the circumference of a circle and you need to make it five equidistant points from each other so you have a perfect uh, pentagram inside of that circle that each of those angles has to be 72 degrees you need a protractor for that so you can do all your specific measurements once i've got my illustration done then i'm going to have to start blocking out the these the other portions of the design which is kind of a rise over run of as the ferris wheel goes around how high does it need to be off the ground because as it goes around it's not touching the ground you need to have that difference of base where it's elevated up and then a base y so it can be supported once it's standing up. coming in with those two measurements i i wanted to do something where we, we had it at least half at least an inch or so of space in between the wheel and the the baseboard itself so using that to help triangulate the angles of the outer the outer arms that we're using to help hold up the ferris wheel that's how i'm using those equations again basic balance of if i do this i have to do this to equal it out 
those are those math concepts that I'm reinforcing. Now, it's not math, this is design, but we're using these items from math to help facilitate that design. Once your design is completely done, now we're gonna start doing the fun part, which is the assemblage. But before we get to the assemblage, we have to make our pieces. So it's time to get to the puzzle building stage. For this stage, I'm using mat board. Mat board is just because I have a lot of it and it's super easy to use. Using mat board, skewers, I think I end up, for this I ended up using chopsticks. So I have a lot of Chinese restaurants around me and I've become really good friends with a lot of the Chinese restaurants because, oh, this is delicious food. If you have an Asian grocery store, there is a section towards the back or towards the side, depending on how the layout is, where they have just house and kitchenware tools. And in there they have like these stacks of, you can purchase a pack of, uh, chopsticks, which I love these as building tools. I personally, I have like high grade chopsticks at home that I like using because I like chopsticks. It's it's easier to, it's more fun to eat that way. Why just use a fork? So using that as the building tools, I'm using that as the spoke and the center post to help rotate all the pieces around. And that's gonna help facilitate building those puzzle pieces out. Now, mat board again is the by far piece that I'm using here. If you want to use cardboard, because uh, we're having the math students build theirs out of cardboard because we got a lot more cardboard than we do mat board. My students are going to be using mat board and a couple other materials. When we, you guys are building these, you do want to make sure that A, I'm using X-Acto knives, so make sure that you watch my cutting video and understand how to cut safely inside of your environment so that you can so you don't harm yourselves. Then using the mathematical equations from, a few, uh, I got some other math videos where we go over radial design. So if you want to do other design aspects, you totally can do that. And we're figure out where the positive and negative space are as we make that design out, what is gonna be subtracted out. Now for this, to make my life easier, I'm using a Sharpie to black out the sections I'm cutting out. And I'm not like completely blacking them out, but I'm definitely putting lines through them so I know this is where I cut. If you've ever done framing before and you've, and you've had to measure mat board and create framing, I do this technique a lot where I circle the two cross intersections, I'll circle that, and I'll also put X's over spots that I'm taking those sections out. Why do I do that is it makes it more visibly understandable so that as I see, I know where I'm supposed to cut and where I'm not supposed to cut. This is a good practice to put you guys into so that you don't subtract out something that you needed to keep in place and screwed up your design overall. Once you got all the puzzle pieces knocked out, now we're getting into the building phase. One trick that I told all of the students that we, as we were working on the Ferris wheel designs is as you're trying to put pierce the hole through the two pieces. I'm overlapping the boards already. My math teacher, he had them tape the edges together so that it was kind of like a clock and we knew where all the sections were at the same time. If you wanna make like a little notch, do some sort of line element where you understand that this is where this is supposed to be and it's not shifting, that's another good tip. My, my other tip is this, when you're pushing the skewer or anything through the board, holding the board, with one hand as it's slightly off the edge of the table. As you put pierce that hole through, it doesn't hit the table, it hits that open space, but you're you're creating a section of where the there, as you're pressing it down through, it just comes through a lot easier. Also, uh, wiggling it back and forth, trying to go like a little joystick and then slice it through, that also works really well. Also, I was piercing mine with an X-Acto blade. Do this, again, as you are using safety measurements. Again, watch the video. Uh, however you need to do that to get that part, part accomplished. For mine, because of the chopsticks I was using, I used a round chopstick for the center spoke. That way it would rotate really easily. For the cross beams that were holding the two disc together, those are squared off chopsticks. The reason that I'm doing that is that the squared off ones were gonna be more rigid. They were gonna hold those two shapes together without shifting. Whereas the center one needed to be round because it can rotate around that single piece. Also, don't waste your scraps. Notice how I'm using the scrap pieces that I removed from the interior of those discs to create the chairs, to create the seats. All I'm doing is taking those two uh, basically Superman shields and I'm taking one piece and I'm cutting out a slit in, in the middle of that to slice those two pieces together and then hot gluing it to finish it off onto the spoke sections and that's going to create the little chairs, little seating elements. This piece, this project is really universal. You can do a lot of stuff with it. Me, I was doing it just for the math elements and trying to help him out come up with a visualization for his math students but let's talk about other applications we could do. If you would rather take all of the Ferris wheel components instead of putting 
hang seats in there, you can put pictures in there, and now it's a rotating picture album so that if you want to display your artworks or use this as a mobile design, if you're doing a project on an, on an artist or, or a history class and you're having to do some sort of visual aid, this is something that you guys could do where you're building a cool design and then using it to help uh, finish off a project. Another idea that I had was uh, using it as a snack delivery system where you can put little snacks on there and then as it rotates around, take the snack off. I, snack time, it's good stuff. Finally, for teachers there, if you guys wanna use this as tool storage, put your erasers on there. If you wanna have these on the individual tables, little baskets that the kids could put the erasers in, uh, the weight of the Ferris wheel is going to shift where those erasers are sitting, so be mindful about that. If you're putting more than one eraser in there, it will shift the overall piece around, and we all know our students are gonna try and make that thing spin. So a little basket design would probably be your best bet. Uh, for that, I've used bathroom cups, and they make these really cool like plastic red solo cups but they're like junior size and you can put the skewer through there and put the eraser on there it works really well just these are com some varied aspects that you guys could do with your project so that we can have a lot of fun and cool stuff uh good project today so i hope that you guys got something wonderful out of today's class can go ahead and wrap it up like we always do don't forget to take care of the homework which is to like subscribe share on all the various platforms get the message out there to as many teachers friends students as we possibly can educate the masses that is my game right here if you guys had a question comment or concern today raise your hands in the comments below Below. happy to answer those questions from my classmates as always i will see you guys next class i'm gonna go make some more fun stuff i will catch you guys on the next class period but until then later guys